Welcome, boys and girls, to Chapter 7, The Death and Resurrection of Jesus. Chapter 7, The Death and Resurrection of Jesus. This is on page 61. Look at that cross, um, the picture on page 61. You see the cross. The cross is the symbol of our faith. And when you have the image of the crucified Jesus on it, we call it the crucifix because of the image on it, a reminder of what we are about to, to learn, the death of Jesus and also his resurrection. But as always, boys and girls, we begin with our prayer. We pray. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. Lord God, may the death and resurrection of your Son strengthen our hope in your promise of life everlasting. Amen. Boys and girls, this is a question for you. When have you made a sacrifice? When have you made a sacrifice? When have you given up something or given something for a better cause, for a better purpose? When have you made a sacrifice? I remember... Uh, working with my parents in a city in Nigeria, and there was a beggar across, a woman with two kids, and they didn't seem to be as privileged as uh, we were. And I had some money with me. The money, of course, I would have used to buy cookies or something for myself. But the sight of that woman on the street in the sun, with two kids, um, begging, looking for something to eat, moved me. And I decided to give up my money. Um, my parents actually did something, but I wanted to do something also myself, and I did. And I gave her everything I had on me, and I wished I had more. But it's been an image that has stayed with me, the image of those who are not as privileged as I am. Um, so when have you made a sacrifice? Was it a sacrifice of your time, of teaching someone else, of helping somebody? It could come in different ways. Think about this. People are willing to make sacrifices for people they love. The passion of Jesus was the greatest sacrifice of all. Jesus' passion and resurrection are the greatest signs of God's love for us. What do you remember about these events? What do you remember about the death, passion, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? This is what we are about to learn in this chapter. I will now turn it over to Mrs. Stever to tell us something about the last days of Jesus on earth. The last days of Jesus on earth. Our faith focus in this chapter is what were the main events of Jesus' last days on earth. In our faith vocabulary, Passover, the Jewish feast celebrating God's freeing the Israelites from suffering and slavery in Egypt and leading them to freedom in the land he had promised them. The Last Supper. The last meal Jesus celebrated with the disciples at which he gave the church the gift of his body and blood, the Eucharist. Let's read together on the celebration of Passover. 
Jesus went up to Jerusalem with his disciples to celebrate Passover one last time before he completed his work on earth. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, a crowd welcomed him as the one who God promised would set them free. They cheered, Hosanna to the son of David. Later that week, Jesus ate a special meal with his disciples. Christians call this meal the Last Supper. At the Last Supper, Jesus gave us the gift of his body and blood, the Eucharist. He told his disciples to celebrate and share the Eucharist in memory of him. The church does, that, does what Jesus did at the Last Supper at every celebration at, of the Mass. Look at the bottom picture on the page, and it's Jesus, and he has the bread, grapes, his friends, his disciples, the apostles are all around him. And this is the final meal. We also, during Holy Week, celebrate this at Holy Thursday. And the liturgy, if you haven't gone, the liturgy is where we reenact this Last Supper. Jesus washes the feet. He also gives us the commandment, love one another. Um, but let's read, they're telling us from the Bible, Matthew chapter 26. And again, I'm using our Catholic Youth Bible. And if you don't have a Bible, please get a Bible for your family. But you might have your family Bible as a gift from when you made your first Holy Communion or there's a family Bible. So if you need to get it, just go ahead and stop the video. But let's go ahead and continue on with a scripture from Matthew. The Lord's Supper. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples said, Take and eat this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. We do this every week at Mass, and they're asking you to compare what you read or what you just heard me read from the Bible scripture, what you see in the picture and what you hear at Mass. We're going to give you a few minutes, take your pencil, and just go ahead under Matthew's Gospel, which I read, and under Mass, which you experience every week that you come to Mass, and just compare both of them, and just write on both of what you heard. Boys and girls, I hope you're done with that activity of comparing what you heard from the Gospel of Matthew to what you see at Mass. We'll now move on to page 63, Jesus' trial, death, and resurrection. Let us read together. After the Last Supper, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. While Jesus and his disciples were there, soldiers came and arrested Jesus. They took him to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, and put him on trial. Pilate could not find Jesus guilty of any crime and wanted to release him. But the religious leaders who plotted against Jesus shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! So Pilate sentenced Jesus to be crucified. The Roman soldiers led Jesus to Calvary, the place the Romans crucified criminals. They fastened Jesus to the cross he was carrying. As he was dying on the cross, Jesus prayed, and this is right out of scripture because it's written in blue. 
Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Around three o'clock in the afternoon, Jesus cried out. This is again out of scripture. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. After speaking these words, Jesus died. Joseph of Arimathea, a disciple of Jesus, asked Pilate permission to bury Jesus' body. Jesus' disciples wrapped Jesus' body in a linen cloth and placed it in a tomb carved out of rock. I want us to look at these pictures of the death and trial, death and resurrection of Jesus. The first picture you see um, Jesus being condemned, being tried and judged. You see the, the thing pointing. Um, if you look at the second picture, you see a woman wiping the face of Jesus. That woman is Veronica. Veronica, the woman who wiped the face of Jesus. And the last picture, um, you see Jesus hanging on a cross. Jesus was hanging on a cross. Imagine you, you are at Jesus' trial and crucifixion. Describe your thoughts and feelings. What would have been going on in your mind if you were at Jesus' trial and resurrection? What would you be thinking about the things that were going on or are going on around you? Describe your thoughts and your feelings. Can describe your thoughts and feelings to your parents or elder, you know, older siblings or to your friends or to, to those around you. Let us go to the upper right side of the page and look at faith-filled people. Joanna. Joanna, a follower of Jesus. Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene were at the crucifixion along with Jesus' mother. Women disciples also prepared Jesus' body for burial, and were the first disciples to learn about the resurrection. Boys and girls, I want us to turn over to page 64 to look at the resurrection and ascension. Let us read together. On the morning of the third day after Jesus' death and burial, Mary Magdalene and another disciple of Jesus named Mary went to Jesus' tomb. They discovered the stone in front of the tomb was rolled away and saw that Jesus' body was gone. Two angels announced to them that God had raised Jesus to new life. For 40 days after the resurrection, the risen Jesus appeared to his disciples on many occasions. Then the risen Lord took his disciples to a mountain in Galilee. He commanded them, to teach everyone what he had taught, taught them, they were to go into the whole world and baptize people and make them his disciples. Then Jesus blessed his disciples and returned to his Father. Look at the left lower corner of the page, page 64. It says, in your own words, rewrite these chapter titles. And you see um, the frame on which you are to write and, you know, get your pencil and get your markers 
It's time to write. It's something, time to do something. He says, rewrite this chapter titles. The first is announcing the good news. Announcing the good news. What would that be for you? What will you rewrite it to be? The tomb of Jesus is empty. This is something we've been talking about. Uh, the experience of the women going to the tomb and discovering that Jesus' body was gone. The tomb of Jesus is empty. Pointer is the resurrection. Jesus returns to his Father. This is also something we've talked about on this page. Ascension is a pointer to that. And I hope you can rewrite these chapter titles. I'll now pass it over to Mrs. Stever to tell us how our church makes a difference. And she's going to talk about someone special, her patron saint, Saint Helena. Okay, boys and girls, our church makes a difference. Well, I'm extremely excited about this page of the chapter, and I'll tell you why. My mother and both my grandmothers have the name Helen in their name. My mother's middle name and both my grandmother's first name was Helen. So I was a firstborn for my mom and my dad, and they wanted to name me um, a derivative of that, Helene or Helena. And so I was named after my grandmothers and my mother. But then they also discovered who St. Helena was. And she discovered the true cross of Jesus. And she's my patron saint. So early, early when I was a small child, I learned very early all about St. Helena. And I'm very excited to tell you all about her in this chapter. St. Helena and the Cross. Christians use symbols to help us remember Jesus and the meaning of his life and work for the world. The most common of all Christian symbols is the cross. The cross is a symbol of Jesus' death and God's great love for us. Almost 300 years after Jesus died, and was raised from the dead, a woman traveled from Rome to Jerusalem. The woman was Helena, the mother of Constantine, who was the emperor of Rome. According to the legend, Helena dug at Calvary and found the true cross of Jesus. If you ever visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, in Jerusalem, you can see a relic or a piece of the cross that she found. As a Christian, the cross reminded Helena to follow Jesus and love others as he did. Helena served the poor and homeless and the needy. The church has named Helena a saint and celebrates her feast day on August 18th. There's a picture of her right at the right part of the book. And you always see, I have a holy card of hers in my office and also in my Bible. And I carry it um, where she's always carrying a cross because of finding the true cross of Jesus. And then the picture on the left is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. It's like a, a shrine, it's rather big, and that's where the relic of the true cross is. Let's read our Catholic identity. Stations of the cross. The stations, or the way of the cross, is a prayer journey we take with Jesus. The stations represent 14 events of the passion and death of Jesus. We walk from station to station stopping at each for a moment of prayer, 
Some churches add a station to remember the resurrection. At our church, we have two ways of praying the station. We have indoor stations that were dedicated and they're on one wall that are done in our church. So when you go to mass, look for them. You'll see them on a wall in the church. And then one of our Eagle Scout parishioners for a project did what's called outdoor stations of the cross. And you'll see them on the grounds of our church towards the back of the parish life center and almost the rectory yard where you can pray the stations individually outdoors. And we do the outdoor stations on Good Friday at three o'clock of Lent, but we also do them during Lent itself. And many people pray the stations throughout the year. So it's something that you, when you come to mass, should look at the indoor and then also look at the outdoor stations. They're magnificent. Though they're telling us of the final journey of Jesus' walk, you can pray each station as you look at them. Let's now just go right into the very next, just turn the page as I'm turning the page, and we're gonna go right into page 66. What difference does faith make in my life? The event of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection and his session are part of your faith story. Each time you generously help others and bring hope, you are doing what Jesus did. It says my faith story, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and the ascension. It says use words or draw picture about the crucifix crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension. And then think how important they are for you and for all people. So we're gonna give you some time to take your pencil or your marker and write in each box or draw a picture of what they mean to you, what you've known about them in your faith life and what you've learned more about them in this chapter. Well, boys and girls, I hope you are able to write or even draw pictures in those three titles. At the bottom of the page, my faith choice. This week it's asking you, I will show my thanks for Jesus' great gift of love. I will. So think of something in your life that you can definitely make a commitment and do this upcoming week and take your pencil and write it down. I'm now going to ask Father Virginus to help us. It's at the part of our chapter where we are going to pray together. So I want him to uh, join us and begin us in our prayer. We pray. Adoration of the Cross. This prayer is from the Liturgy of the Church for Good Friday. Come forward one by one and show reverence for the crucifix. Say these words. We, we adore, adore you, O Christ, Christ and, and we bless, bless you. By, by your holy cross, you, you have redeemed, redeemed the, the world. world. Okay, boys and girls, it's time for the part of We Remember, where we look at words and meanings and um, sequence of things of what we've just learned in our chapter today. So I'm gonna help you, but let's look at it together. Get your pencil ready. It says, place these events of the last days of the life of Jesus in their proper order. Mark the first event with the number one, and then the last event with the number seven. So let's look at everything and let's see what is the first thing that happens on those last three days of Jesus' life. And as we were talking about it, it's Holy Thursday when it happened. That's right, the Last Supper, number one, put the number one there, the Last Supper when he's together with all the apostles, his disciples, 
and they have bread, the last supper and wine. Okay, number two, let's look down there. It would be when Jesus was arrested in the garden. The arrest in the garden, so that's number two. And then number three, what happens after Jesus is arrested? Number three. That's right, he had to have the trial before Pontius Pilate. So number three is the trial before Pontius Pilate. And then number four, we saw pictures of it in this chapter. We talked about it. It's what happens to Jesus as he walks the Stations of the Cross talks about it when you pray them. The crucifixion, number four, the crucifixion. And then what happens after the crucifixion? Look at what's left. That's right, the burial in the tomb. The burial in the tomb. We talked about the women disciples and the burial in the tomb and being at the tomb. And then the glorious word and also the word for the parish that you belong to here. Number six, where does that go? At the very top, of the resurrection. And Jesus' resurrection. And then the last one is the ascension, number seven, when Jesus ascended to be with his Father in heaven. Jesus celebrated the Last Supper during Passover before he was crucified. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for us. Jesus was raised from the dead and 40 days later returned or ascended to his Father in heaven. Okay, boys and girls, it's time to be with your family activity for the week, so get your adult, your parents, or if somebody's helping you with this chapter, read this page. Read it more thoroughly after we're done with the video, but I'm going to go over chapter 7 with my family. So parents, let's look. Sharing God's Word. Invite family members to share what they know about the gospel stories of Jesus' passion, death, resurrection, and ascension. In the praying, pray that that you pray during Lent. You always pray them during Stations of the Cross. It's a beautiful prayer of what we did in this chapter on page 67. Pray that this week. And then making a difference, they always have um, wonderful activities and you can do them all, but if there's one, look at one that might be good for your family. I looked at one that this week, take time after mass to walk the Stations of the Cross Imagine what it might have been like to have been with Jesus. So take the time to look at the stations at our parish and just pray them and walk as Jesus walked and say a prayer and maybe give up uh, for just people of our parish that you're praying for or friends or your family as you pray that prayer and look at the other activities. Well, it's a time where I ask Father Virginis to give us a prayer together. And boys and girls, we learned a lot of what Jesus's life was and what he did for us. And so just look at the chapter and he'll pray and enjoy your week until we go to chapter eight next week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, Father and the Son, Son and Holy the Holy spirit. spirit. Amen. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your week. God bless you. God bless you.